A&P grocery stores were once as ubiquitous as McDonald's, Google, and Walmart are today. In fact, the Wall Street Journal even dubbed A&P the Walmart before Walmart. For 60 years, A&P was the largest grocery retailer in the U.S. Their success and sheer market domination stemmed from their innovation, efficiency, and marketing genius. It all began in 1859 when George Huntington Hartford and George Gilman started a mail-order tea business from a storefront and warehouse in New York City. After a decade of steady growth, the company was renamed the Great Atlantic and Pacific Tea Company in 1870. Hartford's sons came on board to the tea business in the 1880s, and they started to market their first private label brands, like 8 o'clock coffee. When the new century dawned, they had over 200 stores. In the early 20th century, a typical corner grocery store was small, really small, like 20 by 30 feet. There weren't carts. Instead, you asked the shopkeeper at the counter to gather your items, from the can-lined walls mostly. There might be a few root vegetables available, large barrels held the kitchen staples like flour, sugar, wheat, and even vinegar that needed to be measured out. There was no meat or baked goods or fresh produce. Those required visits to those respective stores. It was a rather arduous process to go shopping. And here's where A&P saw their window of opportunity. In 1912, A&P opened their first economy store. The goal was simple, cut costs, standardize the layout, eliminate credit accounts, and delivery. Within eight years, A&P was the largest retailer in the world. So, how exactly did they do it? Well, at first, they only stocked items that were fast sellers, eliminating the inventory that didn't move. They had limited hours and only one employee. People figured out they could save money if they shopped there. By 1930, the Hartford family had opened nearly 16,000 stores and those stores grew in size. In 1936, they introduced the self-serve supermarket concept and opened 4,000 larger stores. They also grew in selection. They carried meat, they carried dairy, and then, in a flash of genius, A&P decided to expand into manufacturing. If they could buy bakeries and vegetable canning plants and dairy plants, and salmon canneries. They could run the product to their stores. They even bought fishing fleets and did their own fishing. Controlling both the supply chain and the retail store allowed A&P to dominate the industry. They could do everything for cheaper and they passed that savings on to their customers. And customers liked the choices that the bigger stores offered. A&P even published their own magazine called Woman's Day. They offered meal ideas with, you guessed it, 
their products. Why not advertise your own products to your biggest client base in your own magazine? The marketing was unprecedented and it was genius. For 60 years, from 1915 to 1975, A&P was the largest grocery retailer in the U.S. And until 1965, it was the largest U.S. retailer of any kind. But the frantic pace and market domination could not be sustained forever. Both John and George Hartford died in the 1950s, and the family heirs didn't inherit the same passion for the grocery business. In the 1950s, competitors began to open up large grocery stores of their own, with new, modern features. And by the 1970s, A&P stores became outdated. They struggled with higher operating costs and customer service. In a last-ditch effort, they hired outside management in 1975 in hopes to turn things around. Some older stores closed, and some new ones emerged. But ultimately, this ploy was unsuccessful, and the Hartford family sold off their shares to a German-based business group. A&P continued to struggle over the following decades, closing stores, acquiring others, and changing ownership. By November of 2015, all stores had been closed or sold after A&P filed for its second bankruptcy. A&P is credited today with changing how Americans buy their groceries. They made it more convenient with a one-stop shop. But what people might remember most is the delicious smell of the eight o'clock grinders and fresh coffee, the friendly butcher, and their favorite bakery items. Thanks for watching, Memory Mountain. If you enjoyed this video, please click to subscribe to our channel and hit that thumbs up button. Be sure to tap the notification bell so you'll be one of the first to know when we post our next story looking back over the landscape of Americana.